we have to keep these things clear in our head. From 1789 to 1868, we had a Protestant Calvinistic Republic where the Constitution was a grant of limited express powers and there were no implied powers in that document, including exactly. the establishment of a national bank, right. contrary to, to uh, that particular case, uh, I think it was Marbury versus Madison. Mm -hmm. In any event, um, after 1868 to the present, we are now in a Jesuit empire. All the states are provinces. We don't have sovereign states, they're simply provinces of, of the great central city, Washington, D.C., because mm -hmm. that is a Roman form of government. Just like the Roman government of old, Rome was a center city, and all the different countries were provinces of the Roman Empire. Right. They've made this, this empire exactly the same way. Exactly. And then they used this empire to restore the temporal power of the Pope around the world with our wars from 1900 to the present. Mm -hmm. My point with Lincoln is that Lincoln did some things that were very wrong. He, he instituted martial law. He, he uh, overthrew the government of Maryland for the most part. He would not let Maryland secede when Maryland wanted to secede. And he did some things that were very wrong and very absolutist. Mm -hmm. But after the Battle of Gettysburg, it's, it's, I am told that he had a change of heart and he truly repented of his sins and believed on Christ and then he sought to set things right. Now, one of the things he sought to do was his refusal to centralize the United States into an empire because he refused to ratify or promote the 14th Amendment, just as President Johnson refused to promote the 14th Amendment after Lincoln was assassinated. Yeah. Well, when did the 14th Amendment? 1868. 1868. July 28th, Under 18... whose uh, watch? President Johnson. Okay. July 1868. July 28th, 1868 was the day Washington's Republic formally ended and when the empire began. And it was proclaimed ratified when it was not in fact ratified. And Pendleton of Ohio said, if the southern states have fought against this, then they're all heroes. And he was a, senator, a congressman from the state of Ohio. Yeah. But the 14th Amendment def basically creates the corporate citizen. Is that? See, in the, in the Dred Scott decision, when, Justice, when the Roman Catholic Chief Justice Taney delivered his decision, which was a good decision, mm -hmm. he said that we were first citizens of our state and then citizens of the United States right and the privileges and immunities of that subordinate and derivative United States citizenship included the Bill of Rights that means that the Bill of Rights was an absolute limitation on the power of the federal government right we had to go to trial with a jury we could not have any unlawful search and seizure etc cetera, etc cetera, okay Mm -hmm. When the 14th Amendment was ratified, it reversed, or was declared ratified, it reversed that. And it made your U.S. citizenship primary. Primary. And your state citizenship a privilege right. of this new U.S. citizenship. Right. And four years later, in 1872, with the slaughterhouse cases, the radical red Republican Supreme Court uh, decreed that these new, this new 14th Amendment citizenship did not include fundamental rights later said to be the Bill of Rights. And if the Bill of Rights are no longer privileges and immunities of your U.S. citizenship, well, our citizenship is no different than Russian citizenship or any other citizenship because everything you do is a privilege. Right. So when you walk in the courtroom and uh, you're waving the Constitution and the judge kind of chuckles at you, He's right. The judge is right. He's absolutely the judge, right. The judge has his flag that's trimmed in gold fringe, yeah. his federal flag. That's the flag of the commander-in-chief. He has a state flag that's trimmed in gold fringe. Right. That tells you the governor is the commander-in-chief of mm -hmm. the state. And this or, is written. It's I'm, all written. Because I've read this stuff, too. It's in Title IV of U.S. Code. If you want to read about the flag, U.S. flag. Right. So it's all there. And the judge knows exactly what he's talking about. We're proceeding here under a form of military rule. The Congress, the Constitution has no stand here. Exactly. And so your pleading of common law and jury nullification, all this is a joke to us, sir. We will proceed as the way we want to. And that all started when the 14th Amendment reserve re, re, actually reversed. The 14th Amendment destroyed our status. <laughs> right. The FDR, when he took our gold from us, destroyed the substance. Mm -hmm. And then with the Erie decision in 1938, that ended all general federal common law. And if there's no federal common law on a, on a federal level, that's telling you there's none on a state level. Absolutely not. And it also is, and now the states have become subordinate to the federal government. Correct. Which is, a, again, a flip-flop, right? That's right, because see, when the, when, the, when the 13 colonies got our liberty after an eight-year war with England, and by the way, King George III was a complete and total pawn of the Jesuits, he protected the Jesuits all throughout England, gave Stonyhurst, or Thomas Weld gave Stonyhurst to the Jesuits, but um, when 
after we won our independence, those 13 colonies became 13 sovereign nations, right. independent nations. And then when they ratified the Constitution, that created a federation of sovereign nations for certain limited purposes. Yeah. So if any country attacked Delaware or Rhode Island, New York would intervene, Pennsylvania would intervene. So it's a wonderful form of government, and it was described by Pelatiah Webster in his great thesis uh, as to our form of government. And it worked. Sure, it worked. Worked for we became the most powerful nation in the world in a mere eighty years. Right, it was like overnight the growth was phenomenal, the production was unbelievable, and but now they've they've reversed it again. That's right. They've destroyed the middle class and taken the Bible out of public school. That you, how do we educate people? How do we get them to understand? And if they did, if the masses did understand what to, what has transpired, what's happened here. What do you th do you think they're sufficiently dumbed down? I'm never, uh, I'm always optimistic. Okay. Yeah. I believe as long as we have the, we can read the Bible, we can read the King James Bible, we read it in our own language, we pray and we seek the Lord, and we have our own decision. We don't need anybody to tell us what that means. We don't need any interpreters, we don't need any priests, we don't need any Protestant pastors. We have a mind, we can read, and God will show us what He means as we read His Word. Yeah. So as we read His Word, then we pray, and the Lord gives us courage to do what we need to do. And as each man begins to do that, then things will begin to change. Right. Um, in your area where you are, no matter where you are, if you're a guard in a prison, you begin to do right things. If you're a policeman, you begin to do right things. If you're a lawyer, you begin to do right things. If you're a judge, you begin to do right things. If you're a president, if you're a governor, you begin to do right things. And then as this whole mechanism begins to do right things, then things happen.